Okay, so thank you for being here. So we're going to talk about one-pagers today. Anybody ever heard of one-pagers? Have you heard that term? So I learned about it um, at an advanced placement human geography conference that I went to. I was working with some folks nationally. But anyway, we'll just jump in. So a one-pager, um, it's a way for students to convey what they have learned about something, what they know about something. It's a high order overview of a particular concept or a question or uh, something that they're investigating. Uh, I like this, this if you're uh, DOK people, depth of knowledge folks, any of you familiar with those terms? I know Tyson probably is. Um, level four depth of knowledge about extended thinking. So if you're thinking of Bloom's taxonomy, depth of knowledge, we're helping students synthesize information that they have received from a multitude or multiple sources. And so I know, uh, Karn, you've done this with um, some of your learning activities um, in terms of, I, I heard you this morning talk about research with students. And so students get this information from lots of sources, then how do they let you know what they've learned or what they've investigated? And so a one-pager is a way to do this. It's imaginative, it's creative, it works with a side of our brains that maybe we're not familiar with. How many of you would consider yourselves to be fairly artistic? <laughs> one? Really? Oh, this is going to be two? So what do you do, sir? What, what makes you artistic, do you think? Do you like to do you draw? I like to, to build. You like to build? Yeah. OK. Do you? What did you? Are you artistic? Um, I sew and I like to draw. Sew and like to draw. I'm a quilter. But I don't, when I think of art and drawing, that's not me. But this one pager, it is an experimental method of conveying abstract thought. So for some of us, it's going to be, what? What does this mean? So what does it look like, right? What does it look like? So here are some one pagers. So you can go on, you can just Google one pager, and you'll find all these examples. Most of the examples that I have seen come from ELA, English Language Arts. And so a teacher, an educator might say, I want you to explain the premise of the outsiders. And so a student has obviously come to class. They've discussed this text, uh, this novel, and then they're going to answer this question or this prompt. I've also seen, this is a new one. I hadn't seen this before. I just um, found this a few weeks ago. Um, a teacher is using it with communication studies. So what is the impact of Twitter in your social network or in your tribe? Um, science uses it. I love this. How do you explain energy? So students basically have one page to do this. And I'll talk about the requirements and some of the parameters that, that educators have used. It's used a lot in history. How do you explain the Gadsden Purchase? We've talked about it all semester, and now you're going to explain to me what the Gadsden Purchase is. I love, this is the one I found, this is what I was first introduced to, to human geography. If I had to recreate that, I'd be in a lot of hurt, right? I, I am just not artistic enough. And so, but I love the concept. So when I heard about this, when teachers were, you know, these AP human geography teachers were sharing this, they were asking questions and, and having students answer. So from my background, I teach the Brett Social Science course, a gen ed course in food literacy. And so I have 60 students, maybe 50%, 40 to 50% of them have an agricultural background of some kind. They're a producer, right? They're a farmer, they're a rancher. And my other 40 to 50%, not at all. So I asked questions like, which of National Geographic's five steps to feed 10 billion is most feasible? Now I could have them write a paper on that, right? They read those five steps, they do some research, but I don't, that's not really the intent. I want them to just give me some feedback. So I might give them a week to answer that question using a one pager. Or I might ask them, explain the omnivore's dilemma as posed by Michael Pollan in his book, The Omnivore's Dilemma. And so they're gonna have to get this information, synthesize information and present it to me on one page. How is poverty linked to obesity? That's a good question, right? And so they're going to research, they're going to try to find answers. And so again, it's, this, it's almost like this dual coding theory where students are using visual and verbal skills to convey information that they've learned. Yeah, if you read about that dual coding theory, you, uh, you've heard that combination of the two, visual and verbal, leads to the most powerful results and Educators have said that students remember more when they mix language and imagery, right? When they mix language and Im imagery. So, again, some great examples. This one right here, this, this one on human geography, it basically explains the commodity chain of sriracha sauce. So this student, if you look at all the details in there, that student 
has conveyed what they have learned, what they know about the commodity chain that is a part of the production of sriracha sauce. So there's a lot of information in one page. So I said to students, you're going to convey this information to me using crayons and colored pencils and markers. And the student's like, I am not an artist. I cannot draw. And I say, but it's not just, it's not the art. I'm not going to grade you on art. I'm not going to grade you on the artistic value of it. It's the intention behind your choice. And the student says, do we have to use colored pencils? I mean, can you imagine your students saying this? If you gave this to your students tomorrow, can you imagine them saying, I cannot do this? And that, do you have to use colored pencils? Oh, no, I said, you can use markers and crayons or paints or, you know, you can use one to three images cut out of a magazine and you just you sit eye roll, right? Oh, no. Can I trace a picture? Yes, you can trace it, but you have to stylize it in some way to make it your own. And I hear, this is so dumb. This is not an art class. This is a Brett social science in food literacy. Or this is a class in languages. Or a class in ag how to teach agricultural education. A class in business. A class in engineering. But I've used it twice now. And it's been highly successful. So what do I do with that pushback? I actually didn't give them an option. I've only done this two semesters now. And, but I found online this great site, and this will be on the recording that they're doing here, but there's a great site called cultofpedagogy.com, and on one pagers, and I found some templates. And so I'm, I'm really torn. Should I give my students templates? Because the, the pushback wasn't that great. I mean, I had a few students say, I really don't want to do this. But the pushback wasn't that great, and I'll show you some feedback uh, that they shared. And so a teacher uh, out there in cyberspace has um, put together a really great set of information. I can't copy it for you. It's copyrighted by her. But there's the website. We can go and find some templates. And so maybe to um, qualm some of the fears or get students off the starting block, here's a template, right? And here's some examples of some templates. I have clearly, clearly defined the requirements. And I'll show you those in a second. And then I give them lots of encouragement. <laughs> you can do this. Let's do something different. Let's try something new. And whenever my students say, I can't do this, I learned this from a friend of mine. As a mom, she says, let it be a challenge to you. So I say to them, let this be a challenge to you. Let's rise to the challenge, and let's do these one-pagers. So here's the format, and I have used this. I, I mean, I've, I've put this together after reading a lot of information on one-pagers. I introduced it in an Honors 1340 class. A social systems and issues class last fall and then I used it again in my Brett social science gen ed course for the university in ASCE 2900 food matters and so I put together some guidelines for them and this is their format so they have to use online white paper include a title so you can see an example here they can use colored pencils or uh, markers or crayons whatever it might be um, fill the entire page Think about your arrangement, so it has to have some planning behind it. Use information that we have shared or learned or you've researched or I've shared or in our class discussions, personal experiences, whatever it might be. Use one to three main images. Place your essential keys, you know, or excuse me, essential and key terms and elements on there so we can see them. It's kind of like an infographic, basically. It's almost like a simplified infographic. And then I have them write their name on the back, and I do that for a reason. So they write their name on the back. And then I make sure that they have a rubric, right? And students always want rubrics. And for me, it's, it's easy or easier to grade. So it's a low stakes assignment, right? It's a low, it's only worth 25 points. And so they don't have, it's not like a midterm exam. It's like a final, it's 25 points. Um, and I'm, I'm willing to share this with you. I've got my email at the end of the presentation. So you can email me and I can send you my rubric. This is right off of Canvas. Um, and so it's, it's it's pretty simple, right? I keep it pretty simple. Um, they have to have five essential key terms or phrases that uh, kind of depict their main ideas, at least three visual images. It has to be purposeful. I don't want a collage. Right? A collage is not very purposeful, so I want it to have some purpose. Uh, the main idea should be there. Um, and I don't know why one-pagers do this, but they like this border thing. And I, I guess that's just someone who first put this concept together. So let's use a border to pull it all together. And that's probably something you can add or subtract as to your preferences. And then I, I do say no grammar or spelling errors. I think that's important, right? Someone's going to look at your stuff. And so this is what I did with them. 
So a one page visual representation of what you know or learned or you've experienced. So we're going to do this today. We're going to practice, right? I don't, I mean, doing is learning. So I'm going to, I'll go back to the guidelines in a second here. I'll show you the guidelines. I have some art supplies here. So now I could use some volunteers. I'm going to give you, um, we'll pass out some paper. I also have some templates. So I have plain white paper, but I also have some templates I put together. I've got some colored pencils. I have some mag old magazines that you can cut up. We'll pass those around. Um, I've got some marker or some uh, cr uh, scissors, scissors and glue sticks. So they're all, yeah, those are just a stack of all kinds of different templates. So, you know, just, they just need one, right? It's one page, so you can pick plain paper, or if you want to wait for templates, you can wait for templates. Okay? Um, let's see, let's pass out some, so pick, just pass out colored pencils, please. Pick a few colored pencils. How many of you want to do some cutting and pasting because you just feel better? Okay, there you go. All right, so if you want to pass glue sticks and scissors, and then let's see, let me take a couple of these over the other direction. Here's some magazines if you want to cut and paste. And the, your mission or your prompt is to define agriculture. Okay, I'm just going to keep talking. I've got just a few more slides to show you, and you can keep creating. Can you multitask here? Is that okay? Can you multitask with me? So when I did this, I didn't have some of that pushback. Not a lot. I had a little bit. But for the most part, it worked out quite well. So I scanned some of the submissions that I got last semester, and I told my students that I was going to take their creations, their answers to the assignment, and I was going to post them in the classroom like a gallery walk. If they did not want to have it posted, I would let them do that. Right? I would let them do that. And so, just some examples here. So this one student here on the left, the gentleman that's cut out of the magazine, she used one image out of a magazine and then used words to define fields and orchards and fisheries and livestock, oceans and rivers. She included the economy, the society, politics, and the environment. She learned that from me. ESPN, economic, social, political, and environmental, EN, not the ESPN Sports Network, but economic, social, political, and environmental impact. So she remembered that from a discussion we had. This student, obviously a potato farmer from Buell, Idaho. Um, ag is the science or practice of farming. Has some statistics in there. Um, agriculture remains a fundamentally important part of Idaho's economy, communities, and way of life. I love that. I just love that. And so when I said to my students, I'm going to post these in a gallery walk, but you may opt out if you'd like to. Um, when I did this last spring in my class of 60, I had two students that opted out. I didn't ask why. I, they didn't have to tell me anything. That's, I mean, I don't, they just didn't want their stuff to be shown. And so that's why they put their name on the back. And so when I handed, I just hand, I looked at those two. I just kind of passed them out quietly at the beginning of the class. Didn't say a word, returned them to them. And then my UTF took all the creations and we posted them on the, a whiteboard that we don't use very often in one part of the classroom. And they stayed there for two weeks. And students would come into the classroom. And out of 60, you know, they're always usually on their phones, but they, some of them actually put their phones down for a few minutes when they came in, went along the gallery walk and talked and said, which one is yours? Oh, that was really good. Oh, you included that. Oh, I included this. Oh, that would have been a great idea. And so I thought it was really, really fun. And you can see the different levels. And I've got some more here. Um, I'll pass around here. I mean, this one is not very fancy. But great information, right? Great information. And so, like I said, you didn't have to be an artist to be successful here. Oh, Tim, all right, thank you. So some feedback. So I, I just asked them kind of anecdotally, you know, how did you like it? Was it fun? Well, the first piece of feedback here I got on my evaluation from this past spring. And this student said that assignment where I had to color a picture describing my feelings about farming was more appropriate for a middle school audience. I didn't ask them to do that. I didn't ask them to color a coloring book page. 
I didn't ask them to describe their feelings about farming, although they could have, but he or she was, you know, did not like this assignment at all. Fair enough. Um, this came, this other comment, the second one came from my honor student, and he was a senior taking a freshman level, Brett Social Science, and he was a business major. And I could tell when I told him we were doing this assignment, the pain look on his face. And so when he turned it in, I said, how did it go? He said, I did not like this at all. And I said, why? He said, it was a lot harder than I thought it would be, and it took a lot more time. And I said, I tell, I'll tell you what. The time that you invested was very um, lucrative because his was one of the most well-defined definitions of agriculture, and it was a business-based, you know, a business-specific definition. And he did an excellent job of, so I just knew from looking at that one piece of paper that he had created that he had a great business mind, and he put it into agriculture to a business model. It was fantastic. It was fantastic. Um, the third one came from an agriculture communication student. I, I asked her how she felt about it. She didn't really even talk about the fact that we were color, you know, pencils and paper. She talked about the fact that she liked the idea that it gave me an understanding of what they knew about agriculture. So she kind of had the philosophy behind it. She didn't even talk about the actual pencil to paper. And then the last student was an agriculture education student. And she loved it, and, and I love Melinda. She said, oh my gosh, I was so intimidated. I am not, I can't draw. I did not want to do this. But she said, it was really kind of fun. And she said, I love this. It was refreshing to have something different than a paper summary in a college class. She really enjoyed it. And so I would guess, uh, if I had 100 students, probably 98% of them enjoyed it or, or liked it in some level, and then probably the 2% were like, I didn't really like it. Now, that's two classes I've done in it. I'm going to continue to do it. I'm going to continue. So share with me. Does anyone like to share theirs? Would you like to kind of show or hold it up or tell us what you did? You don't have to. Anybody willing? You can. <laughs> you give it, or do, you don't want to, do you don't want to share it? You don't want to talk about it? You don't know ag. Oh, so, oh, you're part of ag, but you... Oh, <laughs> medical, all right. So, so do you mind, what's your name? Jackie. Jackie, can I just read some of this? Okay, so Jackie has um, the word agriculture at the top here, so that's kind of her title. Uh, the, she talks about the science of cultivating plants, and then she goes into oh, plants and livestock. So she starts doing like a mind mapping. I love this, it's like a concept map, right? A ma mind mapping, where she lists um, different words that come to mind when she hears livestock. Um, it's not just photosynthesis. Ag is the key development in the rise of sedentary human civilization. Oh my gosh, how profound is that? That is so profound. Soil management, crop management, water management, forestry, uh, pesticides, waste management, animals, and food, like the food chain. Fantastic. So I can get a really good, well, I should maybe not complete, but a, a pretty good picture of what you know about agriculture. And I learned that. Some of my students would put things like, um, Oh, I had one student say something like, Genetic en genetically engineered foods are unsafe for us. And so that was a way for me at the beginning of class, you know, my students, 60 students are wandering in, and I get to my class early, and I say, hey, Jilda, I was really intrigued by your definition that you put together. Tell, explain to me why you think or why you heard or what your understanding is of genetically engineered foods and why they're unsafe. And it gave me a chance just to talk for a few minutes, a few minutes with a student about their perception, okay? Anybody else want to share or, so what are your thoughts? How might you use this in courses that you teach? Can you think of ways, is it gonna work? Yeah, Jackie? So it's actually been entertaining. Do you want this, oh here, Jackie, I have to throw this cube at you or <laughs> bring this cube to you. So, oh throw it, okay, here we go. <laughs> Does it, oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> like the price is um, right. <laughs> so I've actually been entertaining using the doodle notes or visual note taking okay. as an assignment for each of my units because I'm in, I'm a regional instructor in price, but I'm teaching all the way down to blanding. And so I'm noticing that students aren't, they don't have note taking skills developed. And so I didn't know if you've seen success with that as like an assignment base with the rubric. I love your rubric. <laughs> but um, 
that's what I'm probably going to be doing with it. And hopefully they take it on further to their future courses. So as a note taking kind of. Yes. You could do that. You could do that. So I have a colleague. Um, I direct the Utah Agriculture in the Classroom program. That's in my administrative role of extension. And she's putting together interactive note, interactive, it's hard to say, <laughs> interactive notebooks. Um, so they're using, bye, they're using composition notebooks. And so she's doing very active note taking. So this could be even one nice. assignment in there. And I know she, then they're doing lab reports and literally cutting and pasting DNA sequencing and those kinds of things. And so I think that's a great idea. It's just a, another way to, to get them engaged. I like that idea. Right. Anybody else? How might you use this? Let me run this direction. I won't throw this at you. I promise. Tell us who you are and what you do. My name is Sulian Nelson. I am a learning specialist here on this campus. And um, one of the things I like to do is apply my course to their other courses. Oh, okay. And so I immediately looked at this and said, we want to talk about elaboration learning to tie what you're learning to other things Excellent. and elaborate on one thing instead of just Excellent. memorizing a definition and being right. done. And it would be fun to let them choose a concept from their other class, have to do this Very with good. it, and then they could come back and we could do like the gallery walk right. type thing and don't you where love they that? can see them. Don't you love that when you teach something and a student comes to you and says, hey, I took that activity that we used in class the other day and now I'm using it, that concept web, in my 2010 essay. I'm like, yes. I love that. So they're not just using it in your classroom. No, in That's fact, what good does it do to get an A in a study strategies class? It's whether you apply it in every other class. <laughs> so, right. Excellent. Well, thank you for sharing that. Yes. Tell yeah. us who you are. So my name is Josie Russell. I teach um, English down at the Blanding campus. But I also teach you know, across, the, across the state on the RCD system. And I teach literature, and I teach English 1010, 2010. And in my literature classes, I've used this kind of Oh, good. idea um, before and and what I've loved about it is that students are really able to very quickly tell you as you said what they what they understand mm -hmm. even if they don't know they're telling you that you know so That's we'll have right. a theme and I'll ask them to tie you know just doodle me or mm -hmm. draw me uh, the theme and they'll they'll put down characters that embody that theme they'll they'll sketch out things and so um, I found it really really useful in that way mm -hmm. and and I've too got kind of the same feedback some <laughs> students really won't like it right. but some of them really do and so it's I love some of the ideas I've learned here is gonna make my my assignment better so oh, good good and I, I do think we need to practice right and I like I because you said that I'm now thinking I use this for one assignment but I probably should do it another time at least another maybe two or three times in my class so that students have a chance to practice because like any skill you don't get better unless you're inherently gifted, which I've never been inherently gifted with anything, but um, it, it takes practice. And so maybe repeating it another time or two would, would be helpful. Thank you for sharing that. Anybody else? Any questions? Do you have, do you have any questions about how this works? Oh, I've got to throw a cube at you. Oh, I'm, I have a bad arm. I'm going to hit somebody. OK, I'll toss it this way. Are you ready? I'm a bad thrower. Oh, good job. Uh, Eric Failer, I'm computer science. Uh, my question is, if I want to do this like in a single lecture, just to kind of see where the kids are at, like at the beginning of the semester, what do you know about you know computer science or whatever right. topic is? Is this something that would be feasible to do in a single class, or do you think something to be gained to make it? You just did it, right? How many of you had a look at look how good this is? I can see them, so I'll give you an anecdotal answer here. It looks like everyone has something on their paper, so they've they've obviously it only took ten minutes. So I would say do it. Okay, that's kind of a uh, well, if you were in my uh, panel discussion this morning, a, a starting pause to help students focus. So use as a pause, say, all right, what do you know about this? It's kind of like a, uh, not a needs assessment, but, you know, kind of just an well, That's kind of what I want to do with it, and just to see where everyone's right. starting from. So okay. I like that. What's that? Around 100 uh, students. Shit, 100 students. Now, and these are easy to, these are fast to grade. Wait, let's get your, you got to throw the cue batter. <laughs> Ready? Oh, she's good. I can see with 100 students, then you could say, OK, now talk to your neighbor yes. on one side of you, talk to your neighbor on the other. And I think the first day of class, that's really important that they get to know other people in the class. And then like, you could decide if you wanted them to turn them in at the end for a grade or whatever. But I would almost use it more as a break the ice, getting to know other people in the class. 
I mean, with a hundred, that's hard. Uh, but it's a great idea. get to know so four, four or five people. Yeah. Don't the grade it the first day. Yeah, you know, just starting pause. And and don't you think you're gonna like? So if Jill says, "Look, Marlene, look what I drew," and she's like, "Oh my gosh, that's so cute." She goes, "Oh, I can't draw." But I, I, I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying as they start to share, and it might break the. They could laugh a little bit and say, wow, you are really gifted in art. Or what did you know? I didn't know you knew that about computer science. But just getting to know each other and other people just right. helps set the tone for your class, too. Now, I don't know how much it would help you know about what they know about the computer science. You could have them turn them in and then I get would. a feel. Yeah, but just, just as, a, as a, either a participation point, because you were there and you did it, and, but you could read through them quickly to see, or not even read, well, read and look at it to see what they know. Outstanding. OK, we've got about 30 seconds, maybe. Yes, sir. So we've got to catch the box. It's the rule, sorry. <laughs> you did this, you actually gave them the pencils and you just did it in, in class and then you had them finish it later. Is no, I, I, we didn't even start it in class. I you just gave the explanation, yes, showed and, and the I, examples, Yes, right? I showed some, I showed, I showed, um, I showed a, an example on geography. I didn't even show them an agriculture example because I didn't want to give them any give preconceived. Away. Yeah, so I just showed them a geography example and then I had available, um, I had some white paper from our office and I had a, a couple boxes of colored pencils that said, just please, on your honor, if you want them, take them and bring them back to me when you're done. And they did. Most students have those kinds of things, but there are a few that just took them with them. So I said, here's paper, here's pencils. And then they took them and then a week later they brought them back. But I like the idea of kind of pre, get to figure out what, they're, what they know, where they stand on a certain concept. Excellent. We could talk all day maybe. So I have, thank you for participating, you're awesome. There's my office phone number and my email. Um, thank you for uh, being good sports and hopefully you can find this useful. Enjoy the rest of your day.